On day one, I spawned in as a tough golem. Oh boy, I can't wait to have fun, huh? What was that? I turned around to see a massive battle happening out in this battlefield, and I was right in the middle of it. Oh no. <coughs> Come here, boy. A man in a crown beckoned me over. I approached him carefully, unsure of what he wanted. What is it, your highness? I created you for a very special purpose. <laughs> Your duty requires the utmost discretion. What is my duty, Mr. King, sir? I need you to take my crown to the prince. My life is coming to an end, and he will need it to be king. Why is there a war? What's going on? There's no time to waste. You must get the crown to my son, Prince John, immediately. Of course, your majesty. Where is he? He is at Winter Shield Academy in the north. Follow the high road northward. While the king explained my duty, he bled until his final moments, and then died oh. right before me. My liege, I won't let you down. I lifted the crown and took it with me as I ran through the active war zone to get to the high road. The war was reaching its peak, with golems and knights dying everywhere. Ah, this is madness! I finally reached the high road, where my real journey would begin. The crown is en route to Winter Shield Academy. Perfect. Everything is falling into place. Shall I send the rascals, sir? Yes. On day two, I was traveling on the road for a full day now, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being followed. Someone is watching me. I know it. I looked back, but no one was there. All I could see was more open road and trees everywhere. Something is not quite right around here. I better move faster. As I started getting nervous and picking up my pace, I got attacked by a rascal that appeared behind me. Ah, stay back, you freak. The crown is mine. <laughs> the rascal made me drive dropped the crown, so we quickly took it and ran towards a cave. Hey, come back here! I couldn't let him take this treasure, so I chased after him, but lost him once I entered the cave. You rascal! That crown doesn't belong to you! Once I lost them, I kept moving in the cave until I reached a mine shaft. Ugh, I'm gonna find that little rascal and teach him a lesson! Well, now that I'm here, I better make some tools to protect myself in case something like that happens again. I started gathering some wood to make a crafting bench, and then made a nice wooden pickaxe. Let's get mining. I mined for some stone and was able to craft some stone tools such as an axe, a pickaxe, and a sword. Hey, you again! I spotted the rascal in the distance, but as soon as I called him, he ran away. So I chased after him. Come back here, you fool! I was ready to fight and was now getting closer to him as we both continued running. Ah! Once I got close enough, I hit the rascal, but they hit the top of the cave and made some gravel fall on me. Ouch! Ah! You're gonna pay for this! The rascal ran away, and I noticed a cave spider come up from behind me. <laughs> I saw the entire thing, you weak little golem. I'm not weak. I'll show you. I threatened the spider, and then saw that more spiders started approaching me. You and what army? Take that, you spiders! As I attacked the spiders, they bit me with their fangs and poisoned me, so I grew very weak. Ugh, how dare you poison me! Although I felt weak, I needed to keep moving so I could find that rascal. During day three, I had been traveling for a while until I finally heard an unusual voice. What the heck is that? I've got to check it out. I followed the voice and I saw the rascal oh, and an iron golem. He's huge. This place is filled with all kinds of jewels and shiny things. I better hide and listen in. Uh, here's the crown, my lord. Good, good. With this, I'll be able to destroy all human influence on golems. <laughs> yes, without the crown, there is no one who can tell us what to do. Oi, I said that already. Oh, sorry, my lord. Any other news? Yes, actually. I stole the crown from a new type of golem. The king called it a tough golem. Tough? <laughs> I'm the toughest golem of them all. No, my lord. Tough like the ore, not tough like you. Either way, they must be destroyed before they ruin my plans. This crown can never be delivered to the prince. I gotta get out of here. Who goes there? It's that tough golem, my lord. Seize him. Uh, gotta run. On day four, I returned back into the mine shaft, knowing the rascal was still on my tail. I won't be able to run forever, not with these little legs. It was now or never, and I decided it was now. You want some of this? Come get some. Hiya! Oh, what 
What did you do that for? You stole the crown from me. Why exactly does that giant iron golem need it? That's none of your concern. I'll hurt you if you don't answer. Is the crown the reason why the war has begun? It's part of it, maybe, but not the entire story. If the golems have control of the crown, humanity won't be able to rule anymore. The golems can fondly step up and free themselves from years of imprisonment. Well, that's not my mission, so I need you to go back and return the crown to me. <laughs> no can do. I'll be dead either way. Giant Diane Golem isn't anything to mess with, but hey, you've spotted me three times. I'm obligated to give you something enchanted. What? Why? Hey, heck if I know. It's just the rules. You know genies grant three wishes when their lamps are rubbed. Us rascals give enchanted items when we've been spotted three times. The rascal then threw an enchanted iron sword over to me. I picked it up and saw it had sharpness. But when I turned around to thank the rascal, he was gone. Not again. Where'd you go, you little rascal? Uh, whatever. I need to get that crown back. But first, I'm feeling a little hungry. By day five, I was still chugging along, barely taking a break. I need to find some grub. I dragged myself to a nearby shore where I saw a strange lump protruding from the ground. Oh boy, an egg. It sure looks tasty. But just as I was about to dig in, the egg began to crack. Ah! I'm just a small little sniffer. Uh, please don't eat me, mister. I probably don't taste very good. The little sniffer was so scared. I couldn't eat something like that. I'm not going to eat you. I'd rather be your friend than eat you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I decided to ask what their name was. My name? I don't have one. You don't have a name? Is that a serious question? I just hatched from an egg. Oh, yeah. Well, the king named me on day one. I'm Bronzo. How about I give you a name then? I like that little patch of grass on your back. You know what? I'll name you Mossy. I actually really like that name. It's super original. Thanks. I came up with it all by myself. Just then, my stomach started growling even more. Say, Masi, I'm really hungry. I bet you are too. Do you think you can help me find some food? Oh yeah, for sure. Great, lead the way. Masi's nose led us to a spruce forest with a tall thicket of trees, the perfect place for foraging. I think I got something. Masi trotted over to a spot nearby and found a massive collection of sweet berries. Awesome. Thank you, Masi. We started picking berries and digging in, eating to our hearts content. Hey, you, those are our berries. What do you think you do with those? A fox had found us, and he did not seem too happy about us crimping on his stash of sweet berries. Oh, we're sorry. We didn't know it was yours. Oh, I'll give you something to be sorry about, all right. The fox pounced on us. Come on, back me up, goons. Responding to the fox's call, a pack of foxes showed up to help. We were seriously outnumbered. Well, this isn't good. Run away. Masi and I ran as fast as our little legs could carry us and the berries we grabbed. Don't let them escape. There, in the clearing. Are you kidding me? It's wide open. Just trust me. We sprinted into the clearing and hid under a little hill. This way, goons. The pack of wolves lost us and we hunkered down for the night, eating the berries we had scourged up. On days six through eight, I woke up in the morning and reminded myself of my one duty. I need to get the crown back. I've spent so much time goofing around, I nearly forgot. Mossy and I traveled together and I began telling her about the mission. All right, Mossy, we got one goal we need to focus on, getting the crown and taking it to the prince so he can rule. Okay, okay, we can do that. As we continued moving, we came across a little home that seemed to be abandoned. Hey, I wonder who lives here. It looks like nobody does. We should check it out. We decided to go inside since we needed a place to rest for the night. And as soon as we approached the home, a nice villager working on his garden in the back saw that we were trying to enter. Hey, no golems allowed in here. Stay away before I hurt you. Wait, don't hurt us. I'm actually trying to help humanity. That ain't true. I don't believe a word you say. Listen, I'm on a mission to deliver the king's crown. The king's crown? I see. Well, you're not like other golems I've seen. I'm sorry about that. You're welcome to come inside. My name's Manny. The nice villager allowed us into his home, and he began telling us about why he didn't trust the golems. You see, it's hard to trust anyone nowadays, especially golems. Let me tell you why. The way I remember it was back in my home village. Iron golems were never really treated with 
respect. Get back to work or I'll send you to the scrapyard. Now what happened next? Well, there was news. Bad news. The king has fallen! Once the Iron Golem heard the news of our fallen leader, he took the opportunity to strike, killing many villagers. And that's how I ended up here. I needed to escape. I realized that nobody was safe. And now I not only had to fulfill my duty, but I also had a threat on my own species. Well, since you're helping restore things back to normal, you and your weird dog are welcome to stay here for however long you need. I've got spare beds upstairs you can use. We'll take that offer. Thanks, Manny. On days 9 and 10, I woke up with a lot of energy and ready to take on a new day. Good morning, Manny. I will be heading out very soon. Sounds good, buddy. Before I left on my journey, I decided to give Manny a nice little jester for allowing us to stay for the night. So I headed outside to gather some straw. All right, this should be good. I'm going to make him a nice straw hat. Once I finished crafting the hat, I gave it to Manny and thanked him for giving us a safe place to stay at. Man, that's a good hat, I tell you. I'm going to go pull some weeds from my farm now. See you soon, pal. We have a crown to find, Manny. So so we'll be on our way. But it's not safe out there. We should stay here. No, Mossy. We can't keep staying at other people's homes. It's not polite. We need to make our own home. Mossy and I headed out and went looking for a nice open area. This is a great spot. Now let's get into that cave over there and collect some stone and coal. And once we got enough material, we headed back to the nice spot we found and began building our base. After we built the structure of our home, I placed some chests and furnaces and then decided I should make a nice little hut for Mossy next to the house. Hey Mossy, check it out. I made you a little hut. Whoa, it's awesome. I love it. Thank you. Say, Bronzo, I could put my nose to use and get us a variety of seeds for us to start a farm. Great idea, Mossy. I'm sure you know how to make your own way back home. So I'm going to do some exploring. On days 11 through 13, I went exploring. I need some better equipment if I want to stand a chance of getting that crown back. I found enough iron to make an entire iron tool set, such as an axe, pickaxe, and a bucket. I even made a complete armor set. Nice. Now I'm ready for anything. I left the cave and immediately saw two amethyst golems having a chat. So I decided to listen in. Hmm, what are those guys talking about? I overheard them talking about the mutant iron golem and how he secured the crown. Surely the humans will give up now. I started to think about how I felt tired of not living up to my tough name. So I went out of hiding to fight them. Tell me where the crown is. Oh, look at this pathetic wannabe golem. Oh yeah? Take this. <clears throat> what the heck, man? I didn't even say nothing. Now tell me the plans, or I'll hurt you some more. All right. The mutant golem is planning to continue the war until every human is non-existent. That's what I thought. Now run before I kill you too. Okay, okay. Jeez, man. Anger issues. Now that I had an insight on what was going on with the mutant golem, I headed back to the base to get some well-needed rest. I woke up for days 14 through 17 with Mossy on top of me. Get up, there's something you need to see. I looked outside and there was an entire iron golem army being followed by the mutant iron golem and the rascal. They must be heading back to their base. I have to follow. It's too dangerous. I know, but I have to get that crown back. Okay, but I'm not going. Fine. You can watch over the base and start a farm or whatever. I'm going after that crown. I waited for the army to fully pass by before I started following. I gotta make sure I'm unseen. I am stealth. While I was trailing the army from a safe distance, I found a little goblin that was also following the iron golems. Hey there. Wait a pal. These are my shinies, not yours. I'm not sure I follow. Scabby follow shinies. Scabby take shinies. Then Scabby sell on black market for big money. Shinies? You mean the crown? Yes. Big shiny. There's no way I can let you do that. The crown needs to be delivered to the prince. The goblin kept throwing splash potions at me. That gave me slowness. Hey, stop throwing those at me. I can barely move. Luckily, Scubby had bad aim and would splash himself. Uh oh Scubby's slow too. Good. Now we can play fairly. I continued beating on the goblin with my sword. And once the slowness wore off, Scubby couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> 
big meanie. I let the little creature run away. I didn't have time to deal with him anymore. I gotta catch back up with that Iron Golem army. By days 18 through 21, I continued following the army as they led me into a giant iron castle. I watched as the mutant Iron Golem went towards the top of the castle into his living quarters. I should probably wait until night so I can try and steal this crown while everyone else is asleep. I waited until nighttime. I started to dig my way to the castle. Just gotta break this and jump. Ouch! I had to be extra sneaky as I saw the golems guarding the entrance. Did you hear that? This place is old. Probably just the foundation settling. So I kept moving and luckily they didn't notice me. And I located the mutant iron golem sleeping quarters. I gently towered up to the top and crawled through the window. There I saw the mutant iron golem sleeping and the crown. There it was. All I had to do was pick it up and then off to Winter Shield Academy. Come to Papa. Huh? As soon as I touched the crown, I felt a sharp pain in my head as images started flooding in. I saw a vision of the king. Please, spare his life. He has done nothing wrong. You see more actions as an act of cruelty. In truth, they're acts of mercy. Please. I then saw the mutant iron golem kill the copper golem. No! I snapped back to reality. What the heck did I just see? Then the mutant iron golem began to stir from his slumber. Oh no, I get out of here. Thanks to some quick thinking, I was able to jump out of the room and survive with a water bucket clutch. I then broke through the gates. Just before I crossed the threshold, I heard a lot of shouting. The crown, the crown has been stolen. Guards, search the premises. Do not let anyone leave. On days 22 through 25, I continued running away, but eventually two iron golems caught up to me. We're not going anywhere, Bozo. Actually, it's Bronzo. Whatever, Bozo. We need that crown back. Just then, one of the iron golems hit me and hurt me pretty badly. Ah, tough crowd. Out of nowhere, a furnace golem came to the rescue and helped me fight against them with ease. I towered up with some dirt and hit the iron golems. Ha <laughs> ha, you can't get me up here. With the help of the furnace golem, we took them down successfully. Hey, thanks for helping me. I couldn't have done it without you. Of course, I'm glad I could help you out. I'm trying to stop the mutant iron golem from his plans to rule over the humans. Well, that's good. I believe humans and golems can live together in peace and benefit from each other. Well, in order to restore some peace, I need to get the crown from the prince. But I lost my way and don't know how to get to the Winter Shield Academy. Hmm. I think I know someone who can help. I appreciate that. In the meantime, you want to come back with me to my base? Lead the way. The furnace golem and I left together, but we didn't notice the two goblins that were watching in secret. During days 26 through 29, I had made it back to the base. Oh, hey, Mossy. I see the farm is coming along nicely. Also, meet the furnace golem. Hello. Yeah, I got some nice veggies growing here. You want to try some? Sure, I can use them for fuel. As we all ate some veggies, Mossy grew grew to a full-sized sniffer. Way to go, Mossy. Whoa, look at me. I'm so much stronger now. Next, I wanted to make a house for the furnace golem. It was the least I could do with how much he helped me back there. Ooh, I should make it fire-themed. Wait here, I'll be right back. I headed into the caves and began gathering some coal and lava. Hey, some tough ore. That's awesome. I better get as many as I can. I was pretty happy with all the neat materials I had gathered, so I headed back to the base to make the fire themed house. As I was building the home, I added some furnaces, stone, and coal with a river of lava around it to stick to the theme. Hey pal, what do you think of your new home? Oh, it's fire. Oh yeah, on to my next project. I needed some wool and red dye for the next project I wanted to start. So I went to find some sheep and took them back home with me. Once we got the sheep inside of their pen, I dyed them red, breeded them, and sheared their coats. Perfect, time to make a statue. I took my materials with me and began building a tough golem statue and started off with the legs and a bit of the bottom of the robe. Hey Mossy, what do you think of it so far? Looks like a skirt. Maybe it's a kilt. No matter no matter what it is, the statue looks like it'll be awesome. I decided to ask the furnace golem what he knew about Winter Shield Academy. Hey, do you happen to know where the Winter Shield Academy is? No, but I do know someone who might know where it is. The warden. The warden? Hmm? 
On days 30 through 33, I made my way into the caves, looking for the ancient city. We gotta stay as quiet as possible. I was looking around, hoping not to make a sound and make the wardens angry. Unfortunately, I had to sneeze and attracted their attention. I told you intruders to leave this place. I had no choice but to run from the warden. It was way too strong and had a great sonic boom power. I tried hiding from the warden and the more I told him I didn't want to fight, the more angry it made him. Now you're going to leave the hard way. This was it. This was the end of my journey as the warden was about to take my life when out of the blue, Mossy strolled in. Mossy? The warden immediately halted its attack. I hear six stout legs. It can't be true. That's a sniffer, isn't it? Um, yeah. How do you know? The warden and sniffers used to live in harmony centuries ago, but then one day the sniffers left and never returned. Interesting. Anyway, I won't kill you now since it seems like the sniffer is a friend of yours. But what exactly are you doing here? And what are you? I'm having trouble trying to figure you out. Well, I'm the tough golem. I was created by the king, and my mission is to deliver the crown to the prince. What does that have to do with being in my home? I was looking for the Winter Shield Academy. I heard you may know where it is. Ah, yes, I know of it. Great, can you please give me directions? No, I don't ever leave this place ever. I do, however, have an item from Winter Shield. It's a book that an adventurer left after I killed him. Nice, we'll take that book. We can use it to track the scent back to Winter Shield. Uh, okay, here it is. Wow, it smells like stress and sadness. It must be from a school. Thanks, we'll be out of here now. See ya. I spent days 34 through 37 leaving the ancient city and climbing back up to the surface. Once there, Mossy took another big whiff of the notebook. I think I got a lead. Follow me. Right behind you, buddy. I followed Mossy and his trusty nose all the way into a swamp? Hey, Mossy, I don't want to question that nose of yours, but are you sure it's around here? Hmm, not sure. My nose says so, but I could always be wrong. We continued to follow Mossy's nose, stumbling upon a hut in a swamp. A witch might live here. We had better be careful. Before we could even say anything more, the witch burst out of the woods, chucking splash potions at us. Here, behind this. I built up a wall of blocks to hide behind while Mossy and I figured out a plan. Hey, Mossy, you want to be ugly piece of junk? Jeez, she's really angry, huh? All the more reason to take her out. I'll take the left, you take the right. Mossy and I darted out from both sides of the wall and took her down with a combo attack. Yes, we killed the witch. I looted the chest inside of the witch's hut and found a ring of glory. It heals the wearer for every mob killed. That's awesome. Mossy apologized for his nose not being quite as accurate as he thought it would be. It's okay, Mossy. I still trust you. Let's go. After another day of traveling, we could finally see the school in the distance. There it is, Winter Shield Academy. I looked down to my sniffer companion, worried for his safety. I think I've got it from here, Mossy. Thank you for all your help. I think you should go now. Gladly, the scent of danger is very pungent here. I'm not sure I want to be around for that. As Mossy trotted off, I got worried about what he meant. I have to hurry. If Mossy smells trouble, that must mean the mutant golem is on his way or something worse. From days 38 to 41, I arrived at Winter Shield Academy and it was overrun by goblins. Oh no, I gotta be careful around here. Too many freaks. I hid behind a bush until a small goblin spotted me me. And he looked familiar. You again? You have the crown, don't you? Uh, no, I don't. I wouldn't be here if I did. But now that you're here, take me to your leader. Why would I, you dumb rock? Because I'll end you right here if you don't. Fine. Scubby doesn't want any problems. Auto Scubby. He then took me to the main part of the academy, where the Goblin King had made his headquarters. Greetings, Goblin King. Who goes there? My name is Bronzo. I was created by the late king in order to deliver the crown. Hmm, you could have better uses, like being a good bedside table for me. I'm more than a bedside table or a glorified item frame. I'm a tough golem. I don't care what you are if you don't obey the goblin king. And I never will. Okay then, Olga, Agnes, come take our little friend away. Wait, what? I won't let you. I tried to fight my way out of getting captured, but the two ogres were too much for me. No, no, not the head. Ah! 
Next thing I knew, I was knocked out and woke up in a strange place. Ah, oh, where am I? Hey, what's up, Rock Dude? You're basically in the Goblin King's dungeon. Aw, oh, come on. Do you know if the prince is around here? Nah, well, prince is one of the lucky ones who got out before we were taken prisoner. That's disappointing, but at least the prince is safe. Who the heck cares about the prince? What about us? I kind of like it here. Well, trust me, I'm going to come up with a plan and get us all out of here. On days 42 through 45, I started coming up with a game plan on how to retake the school. All right, how are we going to do this? If you are the students and I will start by digging up the science room. Hey, that sounds like a good plan. Once we're there, we'll take all the potions that we can fit in our inventory. While that's happening, Bronzo and his team will sneak into the gym where all the weapons are kept. In the meantime, the nerds need to study the patrols of the goblins and pinpoint the perfect time to strike. Love the enthusiasm, but why don't we just charge them? They are only like two feet tall, and the bros and I already grabbed the weapons. Oh, um... Huh. We battled against the goblins. It was almost comical how inept they were. I then went in for the Goblin King. Prepare to die, you fool! The king was furious and started using his magic to fight against me. Slowness? That's not fair! Neither is spawning more goblins! Luckily, I overpowered him, and he started pleading for his life. Think again, loser. If I let you go, you have to promise to leave the school forever. This isn't the last you've seen of me, Bronzo. What'd you say? Nothing. The Goblin King began to leave, and now it's time to get back to business and find the prince. On days 46 through 49, I got some vital information. Okay, now tell me where the prince could be. Well, I don't know exactly, but I maybe have a few ideas. Well, what are they? I was thinking the beach, having a nice vacation, somewhere on a farm, or in a stone-like place with towers and thick walls. Are you telling me the prince is in another castle? I don't know why you would phrase it like that, but yeah. Well, thanks for your help. I want to make you something special. I used some string and red wool to make a fez. Here you are. What's this for? Proof of how brave and resourceful you were today. You were a true leader. But Thank you. By then, I decided I had spent too much time away from home. I needed to go check up on Mossy to make sure they were okay. Time to go back to the base. As I was following the path, I felt like someone was watching me. So I kept focusing on my surroundings until I finally saw something hiding behind a bush. You rascal! I charged at the rascal and it begged me not to hurt him. Oh no, please, I won't follow you anymore. Just please don't hurt me. Why shouldn't I kill you right here and right now? Be, be, because I want to help you. I can't trust you. But if you want to help, then I need you to stop spying on me. And instead, bring me info on the mutant golem. The rascal agreed and then darted off in a flash. Hey, I've got a swell idea. Why don't you just give it to me now? There's the rules, Bongo. For the last time, it's Bronzo. <laughs> eh, you're already gone. At the beginning of the group of days 50 to 53, I arrived back at the base and told Mossy all about what happened at the academy. So, let me get this straight. You left a boarding school alone to be run by children. I feel like that's how it already was. It was unclear. Weird. Anyways, I need to continue to search for the prince. But first, let's work on that statue. All right, let's do it. I headed out to go mining for more tough since I needed more for my awesome statue. Hey, I got some here. While I was mining, I even found a few diamonds along the way. Might as well upgrade my tools. I made some nice diamond tools and then went back home to work on the statue. Once I arrived, I started building the body of the statue with the help of Mossy. This looks pretty solid. Now let's finish up the arms and details later. After all that work on the statue, I began building a second level to the base, making a dining room area. It looks and feels like home. Great job, Bronzo. I agree, Mossy. All right, it's time for me to head out now. I need to go find the prince. I left my friends at the base and went to the savanna, hoping the prince would be there. On days 54 through 57, I kept exploring the savanna when I finally found the prince's castle. I made my way towards the castle, and once I arrived, I was greeted by an amethyst golem, but this one was nice. Hello, welcome. Um, I don't have a coat. The castle was mostly staffed by amethyst golems who appeared to be working very hard. 
Hey there, do you happen to know where all the people are? They have departed for the king's funeral. Oh, okay. Is the prince still here? The prince? No, he's not supposed to be here. Why did nobody tell us he was here? We haven't even seen him. Hey guys, calm down. I wasn't saying he was here. I was just asking if he was. Well, he is not here, but you can stay here for the night if you'd like. Hmm. I'll take that offer. I stayed in the castle for the night, since I needed to get some rest anyways. On days 58 through 61, I woke up in my lavish guest suite at the Savannah Castle. Oh, this place is nice. I would not mind living here. The amethyst golems even acted like my butlers during my stay. I couldn't complain. I felt like a king. They gave me a golden apple breakfast and made sure I was in tip-top shape. I saw your armor looked rather damaged, so I took the liberty of polishing it for you. Thanks, guys. Really, thank you. But all of this isn't really necessary. Of course it is. You see, I'm not really some sort of honored guest. You don't have to do the whole song and dance thing. Every guest is an honorable guest. Enjoy your chance to stop the blighting. Oh, oh, okay. So, um, do you like working for the royal family? Oh, yeah. We love it. We get paid very well. We get benefits, too. We even get that. Oh, wow. That's a pretty sweet deal you got there. Well, I'm glad to know the king was nice to his golems. Anyway, I need to leave. Thanks for everything, though. Okay. Thanks for the bye. I said my goodbyes and then headed off to the tundra. During days 62 to 65, I traveled from the tundra. Boy, this is a long journey. I hope this crown is worth it. As I kept exploring, I found a familiar face. You again. Oh, hey. You don't seem too happy. Yeah, the snow golems are battling with the iron golems. How's that going? Last I saw they were losing pretty badly, so I don't know how much longer they could hold out for. This sounds pretty bad. If the prince is there, that means he's in big trouble. Well then, you better move quickly. The rascal began to walk away, and everything seemed a bit suspicious. Are you forgetting something? Your priorities are way out of whack, man. The rascal wouldn't budge, so I stood my ground until he finally offered me something. Fine. Here's a diamond chest plate with this thorns enchantment. Go nuts. Thanks, pal. I equipped my new chest plate and then continued to the tundra. As I was leaving, there was a goblin in the distance that neither of us knew about. Interesting. On days 66 through 70, I arrived in the midst of a fight between the snow and iron golems. This looks like the trenches of World War I. I had to step in to find out where the prince could be at. So I went to talk to the snow golem general, who was in the bunker. Excuse me, I have a question to ask you. Well, you better hurry. We need to stay focused. This is our last line of defense. If we lose here, we lose everything. I see. Do you happen to know where the prince is at? The prince is not here. Last I heard, he was at the Winter Shield Academy. I guess I better head to the jungle then. Wait, you aren't going to help us? Eh, I suppose I could. The snow golem then gave me a bow and arrows of harming. I then towered up and started shooting the iron golems with my arrows. Take that, you dummies. As I was shooting, I saw the rascal run up to the mutant iron golem and then point me out to them. Ugh, I knew he was a traitor. The mutant iron golem started charging at me. And before he could get to me, the snow golem general started fighting against him. Run, save the prince while you can. I jumped off the tower and ran for my life. Oh, okay, now to the jungle to save the prince. On day 71 through 74, I headed back to the base to check in on things. Once I arrived, I began building more of the statue and finished up the arms and the details with the leftover tuff I had. Wow, looks great, friend. Oh, hey, I didn't even realize you were gone. Yes, I brought some new golems with me. They needed some refuge. I looked at his new friends, and they were all whole golems and stacked up on top of each other. Welcome, everyone. This gave me a great idea. Here, take these masks and give them to the blacksmiths once the war is over. For now, you can live here with us. Why, thank you. We'll take these. After giving them their welder masks, I decided to make a few small stone houses to give them a safe place to stay. All right, guys, make yourself at home. On days 75 through 78, I arrived at the royal family's timeshare in the jungle. As I headed inside of the premises, I saw the prince with the goblin king right next to him. I will kill the prince if you don't give me the crown. Come and get it then. Let's see if you can defeat my ogre. 
You think your little minion is going to stop me? I ran outside to kill the ogre. He was fast, but luckily I was stealthier than him. And although it was a tough battle, I became victorious. Easy fight. What else you got? I may have been bluffing because I felt pretty weak. And now I had to fight against the goblin king. Bring it on. Take this. The prince threw an enchanted golden apple at me. So I ate it and healed up pretty quickly. The prince also joined me and together we fought against the goblin Goblin King. They used their staff to shoot magic balls of energy at me, and they kept spawning in little goblins to help them fight. And eventually, the prince was able to strike the final blow, killing the king. We did it! Thank you for your help. Of course. Thank you for saving me. I was ready to present the crown to him. Here, I have traveled a long journey to bring this crown to you. Take it. Not now. We have to get out of here. The goblins might be upset that we killed their king. Come on. Uh, okay, follow me to my base. By days 79 through 82, I escorted the prince back to my base and made sure he was safe. This is my home. Nice. Thanks for having my back. I'm glad I got a hold of you. It took me a very long time to finally give you the crown. Are you ready to take it? You saw the way I handled myself with the goblins. Maybe I'm not cut out for it. No, you're the rightful king. And this is what you were trained to do. The prince was very doubtful and began telling me about how he missed his father. I can't do this without him. I need his help. I didn't know what to do, but I had to come up with a way to convince the prince that he was ready to be the new king. I understand you're in a tough position. Here, I'll do something to make you feel better. I then began building a cozy little home for the prince to make him feel good. And perhaps this would help him make a decision. Here, get all nice and cozy. I'll give you some space. This is very kind of you. I'll be here. Just thinking. Okay, you do that. I'm gonna go check up on things. Hey, Bronzo. What's up with the prince? Yeah, what's going on? He's been skulking all day. He just needs more time. He did just lose his father after all. I see. We should all get some rest then. Good night, guys. On days 83 through 86, I tried talking to the prince, but there was one problem. Why don't you want to talk to me right now? Fine, I'll do something else. While the entire world is being overthrown by the mutant iron golem. Okay. Ah, kids these days. I decided to work on myself and my statue. First, I went mining and found some diamonds. Yes, the shinies. I collected enough diamonds to finish my armor set. Awesome. Now I'm ready for anything. It was time to head back home and work on completing the statue. I added the final details to the statue and it was finished. It's done. It looks amazing. Sorry to bother you, but we need to get the prince ready to become king. I know, but he needs more time. On days 87 through 90, a group of goblins arrived at the base. Hello, what are you doing here? Our leader is dead, and there are no viable heirs. We have nowhere else to turn. They explained to the prince that since he killed the goblin king, he is their new sworn leader. Father, please don't go. A great man does not seek to lead. He is called to it. I... I have a lot to think about. The prince ran off to his hut, leaving me with the goblins. So, uh, will you be our leader? Me? I'm no ruler. I just like holding people's hats. See? <laughs> I built a large house for the goblins to stay in and made it look like a dungeon so they would feel at home. We love it. We'll decorate it some more. Thanks for helping us. On days 91 through 93, it was the next morning and the prince came to talk to me. Have you made your decision? Yes, I have decided that I should become king. That's great news. Now, how do we do that? Well, for the coronation to be official, it needs to take place in the throne room and the crown must be presented by a tough golem. That sounds easy enough. You've got your tough golem right here. I'll make the arrangements for the ceremony. You just sit tight here. Okay. I couldn't just sit tight knowing that I could be stronger. I needed to be more powerful so I could better protect the prince. I need to talk to the warden. With that, I set out to find my old friend. It was now days 94 to 96. And while the prince was busy arranging his coronation, I had finally arrived to the home of the warden. Yo, warden, I need to talk to you. Nice to hear from you again, Bronzo. Hey, I was wondering if you could train me. Really? 
Why would you want training from a blind creature? I want to protect the prince, so nothing like this situation happens again. Okay, I like your cause. Let's do it. The warden wanted to work on my strength building, so he handed me 64 blocks of diamonds. What do I do with this? Lift it, kid. Over and over until you're ripped. Oh, okay. I repeatedly raised and lowered the diamond blocks until I felt like my arms would fall off. Suddenly, I grew twice my size. Yes, I'm stronger now. Good. Now you're ready for some mental training. We ended up meditating for hours on end in a steamy room filled with lava. It was relaxing and I cleared my mind. Sweet! I gained 10 hearts! That was great, Warden! You are now ready. Here, take this treasury projection gauntlet. Whoa, what does that do? It's an ancient weapon and it can summon swords from other dimensions to wherever you are aiming, harming your enemies greatly. All right, I'm gonna test it out right now. Not on me. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thanks for your help. With that, I headed back to the base. On days 97 and 98, I was on my way back to the base when I was confronted by the rascal again. You give me that cloud. Oh no, not this time. I'm warning you, hand it over. Not a chance. I fought the rascal and showed him no mercy. I used my new power, killing him instantly. Ha, he never stood a chance. Good riddance, traitor. I headed back to the base to get ready for the coronation. And when I got there, Mossy and the furnace golem came up to me. Is there anything we can do to help you? Actually, yeah. You can help by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and ringing that bell so you never miss another upload. Should we also comment below to tell you what mob we'd like to see next? By all means, yes! With that taken care of, I set off to the prince's castle. Day 99, the day before coronation. I arrived at the castle, making good time too. Seems like everyone is still making preparations. I was about to go in when the guards stopped me. Halt! Who goes there? I'm here to see the prince for his coronation. This is the trusted friend I told you a lot about. Let him through now. With that hiccup out of the way, the prince took me to the lavish throne room. Something was on his mind. I have a plan, Bronzo. We're gonna bait the mutant iron golem into showing his face. I made sure news spread all around the realm, so there's no way he hasn't heard of it. And with the coronation happening tomorrow? He'll want to stop it. Then what? That's where you come in. The prince seemed confident in his plan, but was it confidence or rather arrogance? Are you sure you are ready? Please. I was born ready. I spent the rest of the day making preparations for the coronation. It was day 100, coronation day. There was a huge crowd and trumpets were playing music the whole nine yards. Hear ye, hear ye. We are here today to honor the prince as he becomes the king. I strode through the room, crown in tough hands. Just before I was able to bestow the crown upon the prince, the mutant iron golem charged in, interrupting the ceremony. Right on schedule. Our brothers and I will not sit idly by while you put another tyrant on that throne. The prince is no tyrant. He has a good heart and wants to bring peace between the golems and the humans. You've thwarted me once. Should you get in my way again, I will strike you down. We charged at each other and exchanged blows. His hits were really strong. Luckily, I had my gauntlet from the warden to hit him back with. He kept hitting me with smash attacks and knocking me back. And then I used my gauntlet lit one final time to finish him off. Yes, I did it! I then went up to the prince and presented his new crown to him. Thank you, Bronzo. I pledge from this day forth to be a fair and just king. From now on, all golems shall have full equality with their human counterparts. They will only serve if it is their desire to do so. So kind of like Pokemon? Awesome! 